Here's the first take that we're getting on the index. It is well in the green, 80 points higher now on the Nifty. Markets continue to remain wedged in a very, very tight band. Nifty actually has surged from the lows of the day. It is at the high point right now, 82 points higher on the Nifty right now. Uh, the Sensex 2 is surging in trades and the banks. Look at the banks. The Nifty Bank is up close to about 500 points. 17,750 on uh, on the Nifty and a large part of that is banking. Uh, we've been saying that for a while now. 550 point move on the Nifty Bank. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. You're watching Markets Today, the show where we track about six hours of the day's trading action in just five headlines. I'm Ikta Batra here at the top stories for this evening. The Nifty and the Sensex gain over half a percent. Financials lead the market higher. The Nifty Bank Index surges close to one and a half four percent. BSE companies gain a market cap of around 1.4 lakh crore. Reliance gains a quarter of a percent after beating street estimates on all fronts. Fourth quarter net profits jumped 22 percent sequentially to 19,300 crores. This is the company's highest quarterly net profit on record. Annual EBITDA sales scales to 1.5 lakh crores for the first time. Reserve Bank of India allows HDFC Bank more time to meet priority sector norms and allows HDFC Group to take up stakes in its insurance arm but doesn't offer any concession or CRR or SLR. The news fires up HDFC Life, HDFC Twins close nearly a percent higher. ICICI Bank delivers a stellar fourth quarter post this highest quarterly net interest margins also reports record profitly income growth returns on assets and return on equity stock surges over 2%. Sun Pharma tumbles after receiving non-compliance notice for its Mohali facility from the US FDA. Wipro gains over 2% on a buyback possibility along with its results while Ami Organics perks up as it forays into the semiconductor industry. All right, those are the top stories. Here's a lineup of what we have in store for you. In market opinion, we have Vineet Sambri of DSP Investment Managers. Other big voices on the show today are Sandeep Bakshi of ICICI Bank and Prashant Kumar of Yes Bank. Well, straight to the trading action then. The Lal Street starts the week on a firm footing. Nifty and the Sensex gain over half a percent. Financials led the market higher with ICICI Bank being the top contributor. BSE companies gained a market cap of 1.4 lakh crores, the highest level in two months. So Riyupadhyay is here with a wrap on the day's trading action. Well, the week finally starts with a bang. We got so used to consolidation and the index not moving even an inch. All of that ended at least for today and we saw momentum come back to the market which actually led to the Nifty uh, heading to the 17,750 levels. Not bad at all. What powered the move? Earnings and in specific banks. The ICICI bank numbers literally lit up the charts and they've led to a lot of enthusiasm and excitement in the rest of the pack as well. So the rub off uh, effect was seen on an Axis bank. On a state bank of India, the bank nifty was very, very powerful today with a move well over 1%. So banks definitely taking the market higher. Uh, the other trend was the HDFC, HDFC bank merger kind of adding to the sentiment. Both of those stocks, uh, as the RBI came in uh, with some more clarifications in terms of regulatory requ requirements as the merger uh, you know, gets underway, both of them were up around uh, half a percent to 1%. HDFC Life was the biggest beneficiary because of the clarification from the RBI that the parents, HDFC Bank, HDFC, they don't have to now sell down their stake to 30% in the life insurance subsidiary. So that stock, HDFC Life, star performer, top gainer on the Nifty. Which then brings me to some of the consumer stocks. Earnings are really driving all the action over here. Ahead of numbers, Tata Consumer was up, for instance, 4, 4.5%, pulled up some other names like uh, Nestle and Titan uh, along with it. Uh, so consumers were good. Reliance was fairly steady, half a percent up after its uh, strong fourth quarter show as well. So what was the problem? Well, there was some selling in, in pharma for sure and in Indusind Bank. And that was one banking number that didn't quite meet expectations, especially with ICICI Bank really setting the bar so high. Some selling there and of course pharma, as I mentioned, uh, which was a little downbeat. The mid-cap market was in fine form as well with a strong advanced decline ratio, half a percent up on the mid-cap indices, little more than that on the small cap index. Short point, momentum is back, the bulls are alive and kicking. And as long as this market keeps getting good solid earnings, the bulls will want to take control back. 
Okay, all right, uh, Surbi, thanks very much for that. In market opinion, Vineet Samri of DSP Investment Managers said that the market might see some recovery post the slowdown over the next one or two quarters and added that consumption slowdown in rural India is going to impact urban markets now. I think clearly, uh, you know, we are seeing some bit of uh, moderation when we think talk about the earnings. I think uh, over the next one or two quarters, the impact of this uh, slowdown should be felt and we should see uh, the, uh, you know, recovery post that. Within the consumption basket, we've seen, we are seeing that, you know, uh, the uh, entry level or the, uh, you know, rural side or the bottom of the pyramid, I think that's, the category which is uh, sort of uh, slowed a bit and it is also maybe uh, casting some bit of impact on uh, the urban markets now. So I think there is some bit of that slowdown which is there. Maybe, uh, you know, people are sort of uh, wanting to save slightly more given where the inflation is right now. I mean, it is cooling off, but I think people just want to be on uh, or on the uh, side of a bit more caution. It will be a good positive if, uh, you know, let's say pre-election led spend starts to improve uh, the overall consumption, the investments which have taken place till now, those start showing up in terms of improvement in consumption. I think that will be a double sort of a positive uh, for the markets. Okay, so that's some opinion there. But on to the second headline now. Reliance was buzzing in trade after delivering a so strong set of numbers, beating the street on all parameters. Net profits jumped over 22% on a quarterly basis to 19,300 crores. This, the company uh, uh, reported, was the highest quarterly net profit on record. Sonia Shinoi joins in with more. Well, thanks a lot for that. Reliance Industries reported their numbers, which were above street estimates. And the star of the show this time around was the oil to chemicals business, which saw a good growth in its operational performance. The other star was the retail business, which has grown at a scorching pace. Now Reliance Retail having stores in excess of 18,000, which is a growth of 20% compared to what we saw last year. Brokerages have given the earnings a two thumbs up. In fact, Morgan Stanley says that the numbers beat street estimates and it's the energy vertical that drove the beat in the numbers this time around. Kotak Institutional Equities reiterated a buy with a revised target price of 2,800 rupees. They say that the strong pace of store addition in the retail segment is what has boosted the earnings this time around. They added 800 new stores in Q4 with a total addition of 3,000 stores in FY23. And this takes the total stores to 18,000, which is a growth of 20% compared to last year. Jefferies has upgraded uh, the EBITDA of FY24 and 25 by 3%. They say that the retail's scorching pace of growth is something that could add the aid the EBITDA by 30% compounded over the next two years. Motilal Oswal reiterates a buy with a target price of 2,800. The other positive they mention is that the net debt remains flat despite the capex underway, which means that the capex was funded through internal accruals and no further pressure on the balance sheet, which is a positive. And finally, JP Morgan remains overweight. They have a target price of 2,960. They say the risk reward is now favorable for investors. The stock's underperformance in the last one year is, un is uh, unwarranted, they say. Remember, in the last one year, the Reliance stock is down 15%, while the Nifty is up 3%, and now they feel things could reverse. Okay, all right, Sonia, thanks very much for that. Well, on to the third headline today, HDFC and HDFC Bank rallied in trade after RBI allowed HDFC Bank more time to meet priority sector norms. HDFC Life also surged over 8% as the Reserve Bank of India also allowed HDFC Group to up stakes in its insurance arms, but doesn't offer any concession on CRR or SLR. Abhishek Kathari is here with more. As you mentioned, you know, RBI has provided certain clarification for requests made by SDFC Bank and SDFC Limited with respect to merger of both the entities. So first up, for priority sector lending uh, target, one third of SDFC's outstanding loans will be taken care of priority sector lending target for first year. The balance two third will be done over the next two years. So this is a big relief in terms of meeting the priority sector lending norms. Uh, investments including arms and associates of SDFC Limited 
Limited can continue as investment for SDFC Bank. So with respect to stake in SDFC Life and SDFC Ergo, the bank can take up stake over 50% in both the entities. For SDFC Credila, they have to take the stake to 10%, uh, you know, down to 10% within two years. Other highlights are that they have to comply with CRR, that is Cash Reserve Ratio Requirement, SLR, Statutory Liquidity Ratio Requirement, and LCR, that is Liquidity Coverage Ratio without any exception. So from day one, they will have to meet the CRR, SLR and the LCR requirement of the merged entity. So SDFC's rates to be linked to benchmark within six months. This is a positive news given the fact that this will help in the yields remaining on the healthier side. SDFC Bank has arranged a con call in which they say the requirement for PSL kicks in only 12 months after effective date. So they have some time in uh, terms of you know meeting the requisites. Carrying excess S uh, LCR already in the balance sheet and uh, they are also carrying excess SLR as well as, uh, you know, the CRR above the requisite norms. So brokerages have written note, uh, CLSA uh, says that a glide path of two to three years provides adequate time for SDFC Bank to reduce its, uh, you know, party sector lending norms versus negative PSL impact that would have happened on day one of the merger. Bernstein has also written, they say that the development increases the confidence of a smooth merger process for SDFC Bank and SDFC Limited. The pros and cons of RBI announcement, practice sector lending requisite uh, meeting time is sufficient for the lenders to meet that norm. However, meeting CRR SLR requirement from day one can have slight impact on the immediate earning profile of the merged entity. However, it will get played out over the next couple of quarters. So things which are still pending with RBI in terms of the application and uh, permission sought by SDFC Bank and SDFC Limited is clarity on valuation of certain assets that are held by SDFC Limited. Now, project financing loans that SDFC Limited has provided, there is more clarification needed with respect to certain procedural matters over there and small investments in the book of SDFC Limited, how that will get accounted in the bank. So these are some of the key clarifications that SDFC Group is awaiting. Back to you. Okay, all right, uh, Abhishek, thanks very much for that. So what does that mean for HDFC Life and what are brokerages saying? Also, what is this nod by the RBI likely to imply for ICI and Lombard? Surbhi is here with the details. Thanks so much for that. So RBI's decision to allow the merged entity HDFC and HDFC Bank to own over 50% stake in HDFC Life comes as a double booster. Now with this, HDFC Life will become a direct subsidiary of HDFC Bank. Now currently, it has around 50% stake in HDFC Bank channel, which is likely to only improve from here on. Also, this will help to decrease their cost of distribution, which will in turn aid their margins. Now, the overhang of a possible reduction of a 19% stake sale by HDFC to HDFC Bank, if the RBI had directed to keep the stake below 30%, now goes away. Gather it is now certain that the merged entity will acquire additional stake before merger completion. Now, currently, Aberdeen holds around 1.7% stake and Excite holds around 4% stake. So, on back of this positive news, certain brokerages have also upgraded HDFC Life. MK has upgraded from hold to a buy with a target price of 650, and Investec says that the stake sale overhang now goes away from HDFC Life. They prefer HDFC Life over the other insurance players. They have a buy rating with a target price of 560. On this continuation, Morgan Stanley also has an interesting view, but they have the view on ICICI Lombard. They say now the RBI's permission to increase the stake over 50% in life may have a positive rub off on ICICI Lombard, is, uh, on Lombard as well. They say that ICICI Bank had to bring down the stake in Lombard to 30% by September 2024. They currently own around 48%. Now, with this, it means that ICICI Bank can increase their stake in Lombard as well. On its Q4 earnings call, ICICI Bank did not specify in which way would they go. Will they increase or decrease their stake is not yet known. They say if they choose to increase the stake in Lombard, it will rem remove a big overhang from Lombard. They expect it to remain a talk talking point for market until ICICI Bank states which course of action will they take. Okay, all right, Surbi, thanks very much for that time for a break now, but we'll be back on the other side with all of the other top stories. Hey, call you got it. Sir, 
कमाल की कार के लिए कमाल का पेट्रोल भी चाहिए एकदम टॉप का जो हमारे इंडिया में मिलता कहा है अरे सर प्रीमियम कार्स के लिए इंडियन ऑयल ने बनाया है हंड्रेड ऑक्टेन वाला देश Union to NSE closing bell as we spot deals before they happen. Decode their impact on stock prices and help you stay ahead of the markets. CNBC TV 18. Follow the leader. Welcome back. You're still with us on Markets Today. Well, the fourth headline today, ICICI Bank was busting in trade after reporting a strong set of numbers in the fourth quarter. Net interest margins hitting an all-time high of 4.9%. The bank's net profit jumped nearly 30% year on year. Abhishek is back with us with the fine print. Well, uh, you know, Sandeep Bakshi has created history for ICICI Bank in Q4 FY23. So records continue to gather as the net interest margin of 4.9 percent is the highest that they have ever seen. The domestic net interest margin has crossed the 5 percent level, and the international net interest margin is also at 26 quarter high of more than 1 percent. So the NIR growth is perhaps one of the best that you are seeing in last 8 to 10 years, uh, given the fact that it's a growth of 40.2 percent YOY, which has Aided the pat or the earnings or the bottom line of the uh, bank being the highest ever in terms of quarterly performance. So highest ever quarterly return ratios as well. The return on asset is at 2.39 percent and the return on equity is at 18.9 percent. Asset quality continues to improve. The gross NPA ratio has come down to 2.81 percent and net NPA ratio at about 0.48 percent. So the asset quality is one of the best that you are seeing in last 33 quarters or even more. Unsecured book. Book is the highest in last 22 quarters. The proportion of that unsecured book in the overall loan mix is now at 19.4 percent, which continues to aid in net interest margin being on the higher side. On the flip side, the deposit growth that's a bit worrisome. It's come in a little less than 11 percent. And going ahead, management has indicated that the net interest margin may not be sustainable at current levels. But 5 percent net interest margin on domestic business, even a small decline, will go well with investors. P&L. Both in terms of NIR and PAT, it's a beat on our poll. Brokerages remain upbeat on the stock. They say that the ROE will increase to about 17 to 18 percent for the full year by uh, you know FY25. So they raise their estimate by three to nine percent, and they say that uptick in deposit mobilisation will be a plus point given the fact that FY24 loan growth will be strong across brokerages. The target price ranges from as low as 1100 to as high as 1200 per share. Back to you. Okay, all right, Abhishek. Thanks very much for that. Staying with banks, Indusind has reported a mixed set. However, it's been a strong quarter on the asset quality front, with growth gross as well as net NPAs on a downward trend. The stock ended lower uh, today by around a percent. Abhishek still with us to give us more. Uh, well, operationally, a weak quarter coming in for Indus in Bank. Uh, given the fact that if you take a look in absolute value, uh, one of the rare instances that you are seeing in this quarter uh, of a bank reporting increase in gross NPA and net NPA. So, absolute value of uh, gross NPA is up two percent, and uh, uh, net NPA is also up two percent, uh, which is uh, a weak, you know, considering the fact that on an industry level, the gross NPA and net NPA are improving. We need to wait for the movement of gross NPA details uh, as per. Philip Capital, uh, they were estimating a uh, 1,400 crore of uh, slippages for Q4. So how that might have played out in this quarter needs to be seen. And if at all it is higher than that, then that will be taken negatively. Uh, operationally, the NIR growth is on the weaker side. Uh, as per our poll, we were working with a number of 4,716 crore. It has come in a little under 4,670 crore, which is a miss of nearly one percent. So even their operating profit growth is uh, below their overall uh, loan growth. Coming in at 12.9 percent YOY and just 1.9 percent uh, quarter on quarter. So lower provisions have aided the pad this time around. Provisions have declined by 29.6 percent YOY and about 3.3 percent on a sequential basis. So they have reported a pad of 2,043 crore, which is up uh, above our estimate of 2,012 crore. So a uh, business momentum has remained pretty strong for them. They had reported this business number of deposit and advances earlier as well. Cost to income ratio that seen a sharp spike as well, uh, 44.9 percent when compared to 43.5 percent in the same quarter last year and 43.9 percent in the previous quarter. So overall, operationally a weak quarter for Indusind Bank. Back to you. Okay, all right. Well, we have we are not yet done with banks and uh, Abhishek. Thanks very much for getting us that perspective in, on Indusind. 
But yes, Bank uh, ended lower by around 3-odd percent on what was a weak quarter. The quarter was marked by a worsening asset quality, poor return ratios and a loss in market share for the bank. However, the net interest margin was the best that they've seen in nine quarters. Here's Prashant Kumar, the MD and CEO on the outlook. In the FY24, uh, the slippages would be somewhere between 1 to 1.5%. Retail is growing much faster than the corporate. So even the last year growth has been 38%. I think this trajectory would continue for some time and retail uh, would be somewhere around 50% of our balance sheet. Uh, regarding the names, I think we are still in that trajectory where for us this is not picking out. Uh, this would be a continuous upward journey for us. All right, well, on to the fifth headline today then. Sun Pharma has temporarily halted production at its Mohali facility. So it's definitely a negative which has come through for Sun Pharma because remember that now uh, the Mohali facility, what analysts are pegging this at is that it could possibly be, uh, you know, similarly compared to an import alert. So I'll come to that in just a bit. But they have basically received a letter which is titled Consent Decree Correspondence. Remember, they were the Mohali facility, which was inherited from the Ranbaxy merger, was basically um, a, a part of a consent decree which was entered into in 2000. Uh, 13, 2014 or thereabout. Now, the USFD has inspected the company's Mohali facility from August 3rd to August 12th last year. They had issued six observations. It had resulted in an official action indicated status, which means that the possibility of an adverse action increases if you have the OAI status. Now, the company has said that they have taken certain corrective actions before releasing the final product batches into the US. Actions include retaining an independent expert to conduct batch certifications. The company says there is a temporary pause in terms of the release of batches from Mohali. Now, in terms of the impact, uh, a brokerage such as Incred says they expect a low mid single digit impact on the numbers for a three to six month time period. But the overall negative also is that this, this is the second plant which is under the US FDA scanner. And remember that the company's Halol facility already has an import alert. So that's what's probably something uh, which is worrying the street. But, this, uh, but the stock recovered with a cut of only one odd percent by the close of trade. But let's move on. Ami Organics was buzzing in trade after it announced its foray into the semiconductor industry with its latest acquisition. The company has acquired majority stake in speciality chemical maker Baba Fine Chemicals. Sonal is here with the details on this. Every chemical company has a different fundamental and factors affecting individual performance as well. But if I talk about the overall chemical industry, it is largely expected to have an improvement on a quarter on quarter basis. Due, this is due to pickup that we'll see in exports. But there could be a muted performance, YOI, in some cases due to a weak global demand environment. Uh, now let's talk about raw material costs. Basic chemicals, they have seen a decline in pricing, and that is because crude prices fell 8% on a sequential basis. Feedstock for oleo chemicals, that was down 20% on a sequential basis. And ocean freight rates, they are down anywhere between 40 to 50%. So this will, of course, aid margins quarter on quarter. But demand pressure will continue in discretionary sectors like dyes and pigments, polymers, something companies that uh, they have been telling us. Now, the fluorochemical space particularly. Sustained high price in refrigerant gases will aid earnings. However, there will be weakness in packaging and technical textiles business. This is just for SRF and that's why revenue will be flat. EBITDA and profits for the company will be down this time. However, for Naveen Fluorine, earnings will be aided by high performance products in specialty chemical segment, leading to a 56% revenue, 98% EBITDA and 52% growth in profit after tax. For Aarti Industries, which recently saw demerger of the pharma business, we will not be able to compare numbers YOI due to the demerger. But incremental revenue will come in only from new capex after FY24. And that's why revenue is flat in quarter four. EBITDA is up, but the profits are expected to be down by 2%. For oleo chemicals player Galaxy Surfactants, it will be a steady performance after some weakness that we saw in last couple of quarters. Volumes are expected to grow 6%. Performance surfactants will be up 10%, but specialty, which is the higher margin business, will see flat performance. For Jubilin and Grevia, operational metrics will be weak, down anywhere between 11 to 15%. This is, of course, in a high base. Acetic acid, which is the raw material, has seen a 40% decline in pricing, which will lead to lower revenues for the company as well. Generally, active ingredients have seen a decline, and that's why performance will be weak. Now, taking you through the stock moves this year and valuations, barring few, these stocks have underperformed. 
SRF Naveen Fluorine, they are up anywhere between 8 to 16 percent. However, valuations for Naveen Fluorine are at an industry high at 45 times. Galaxy Surfactants is up with valuations at 23 times. RT Industries is uh, uh, is also on the lower side. It's around down 10 percent, but valuations at 33 times. As far as the new listings are concerned, Tathwichintan, Clean Science, Chemplast, all of them are down anywhere between 7 to 23 percent, with valuations very low for Chemplast at 13 and a half times, and for Clean Science 40 times after listing at around 80 times. So big fall is what we've seen there. Okay, all right, Sona, thanks very much for that. IT major Wipro has announced that it will consider a share buyback proposal later this week, along with the release of its March quarter earnings report card. Reema's here with the details. Thanks so much for that. So Wipro has said that when the company, uh, the board meets for considering the numbers on the 27th of April, they will also consider a buyback. Now, this will be Wipro's fifth buyback in the last seven years. Last year, the company did not do a buyback because they were focusing a little more on their M&A acquisitions. Now, JP Morgan estimates the buyback size could be $1.2 to $1.5 billion. Morgan Stanley says, based on the past buybacks, the range of the buyback could be from 6,500 going up to 10,500 crores. Uh, the cash in the books is ample at $2.7 billion. The past three buybacks by Wipro have been tender buybacks, so that's what the street is anticipating because in a tender buyback, the promoter can also participate. The good part about a buyback, right now at least, is that it can lend some support to the price uh, in case of you know, stock volatility or uncertainty or weakness given the current environment. Back to you. Okay, all right, Rima. Thanks very much for that. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Markets Today. Thanks very much for watching.